In this video, I'm going to be talking about Discord as it compares to Facebook groups as a place to host online communities. Now, you may be a member of lots of Facebook groups and uh, wonder what all the fuss is about Discord because there is a growing number of people that are moving their communities from Facebook to Discord and indeed other platforms as well. Uh, but what is it that is driving that and why is it that uh, some people are feeling that they're, uh, they're communities could be hosted on better platforms than uh, Facebook groups. Well, you may have encountered some of the uh, the potential issues with Facebook groups. Um, or on the other hand, you may have just sort of been going along with it thinking that that is the way that things uh, should be and need to be uh, without realizing that there is another alternative. Uh, I myself have been in countless Facebook groups. I literally don't know how many I'm in. <laughs> I haven't counted them up, but I am a member of a lot of them. And that is uh, possibly one of the reasons why uh, so many people do use Facebook as their sort of first idea when they think about, right, well, we've got a, a collection, you know, a group of people that we want to bring together uh, and have a sort of collective online. Um, then where should we do that? Well, everyone's on Facebook. Um, everyone knows how Facebook groups work. So let's all come together and uh, create a Facebook group. Um, it's great. It's possibly, arguably, a little bit lazy as well because <laughs> it's not necessarily the best place for it. And so I'm just coming out with my uh, uh, my cards on the table here that I'm, <laughs> I'm not a huge fan now that I've seen that there is another way to do these sorts of things. So I will be talking about Discord from the point of view of specifically, uh, let me just get this straight, why I think it is better than Facebook to host your community. The top thing about this is we've talked about Facebook being, you know, it's ubiquitous. Everybody's on Facebook. But one of the things about Facebook is it does have this endless scroll. The aim of Facebook is to keep you on Facebook uh, so that they can obviously serve you ads and things like that. But they just want to keep you on that platform. Uh, and I know that that's the same for lots of other things. It's the same for YouTube. You know, we, we want as YouTubers, we want, you know, people to continue to watch our videos. YouTube wants to keep people on YouTube as well for exactly the same reason. So I'm not disputing that for one minute. Um, but when it comes to a community space, that's not necessarily the kind of... Uh, uh, driving force that we want to be actually you know driving the interactions that we're having in the uh, the community space that we're trying to create um so Facebook are basically applying that same sort of scrolling idea to all of the conversations that are going on in your community, in your Facebook group. And that is just simply not natural, is it? It's not natural to just come in and listen to, you know, who's talking the loudest or the people that are com having a conversation right at the front and ignoring everything that's happened, you know, maybe yesterday, depending on how big the group was, the conversations from yesterday can easily get lost. And if you just don't scroll down enough, you're not going to see all of that great information. So it's not got a great deal of uh, sort of discoverability, apart from what's the latest thing that people are talking about. Um, that also brings me on to then the sort of general organization. It is just a stream of uh, of posts, of things like that. And again, uh, in no particular order, it's not in total date order either because you might end up with a post that was uh, three years ago. Uh, somebody's just chimed in with their opinion or comment on it. And then that one comes rising to the top of the list as well. It's just not, uh, not the best way to organize things in my mind uh, because there is no organization there. Then it comes to the idea of uh, search and finding things. Technically, yes, we do have a search function in uh, Facebook, but I don't know about you, I've never really found it that great. Uh, depending on the group you're in, you know, if you've only got a few posts or it's not a very active group or something, the mileage may vary on this. But whenever I've tried to find stuff in the sort of popular groups that I am a member of, um, it's been quite tricky to find what I'm looking for if I've tried to search for it. And often I'll see a post and then I'll think, you know, later on, uh, maybe a few days later or something, maybe someone asks me about it. And I think, oh, there was definitely a post about that in that group. I'll do a quick search. No luck, can't find it. Uh, I'll try maybe to scroll Again, depending on how uh, how active the group is, you could be scrolling for a long time, totally miss the uh, the post or not be able to find it. Again, it's reliant on actually seeing it. Uh, and so it's a, a little bit tricky. Sometimes it's a post that I might have commented on or someone commented on, you know, on my behalf, mentioned me in it or something like that. Uh, and then it's a case of going through my Facebook notifications and trying to uh, trying to find uh, the one from my notification history. Again, more scrolling to try to get to it. 
This is another sort of thing about it as well. Uh, because people are on Facebook for lots of other things and because it is just intended to you know, keep people scrolling, uh, you really don't have the focus. When people go to Facebook, uh, and I'm speaking from personal experience here, if I think, right, I'm going to go and check out you know, uh, the Ecamm Live group, for example, <laughs> I might go to Facebook uh, to go to the Ecamm Live group, but straight away I'm presented with things that uh, you know, Facebook has gauged that I probably want to have a look at. So uh, you know, this is straight away, before I've even got to the point of going into the group, it's all already trying to catch me with this scrolling content and things like that and the same for if I go to notifications trying to find uh, any notifications relative to the group it's just one big pot basically where I'm getting all of the notifications together and uh, so there is no sort of focus so it does lack this sort of focus by contrast let's just come and have a look at a an example of a server and a fine example of a server <laughs> Not the best one, I should imagine, uh, should say, but uh, still <laughs> a good first attempt would be my server. So that is at takeonetech.io slash discord. Uh, so obviously there's a bit of uh, conditioning going on here. I'm trying to explain to you why I think that this is a good place to uh, sort of grow my online community. Uh, but if I come over to my discord server, uh, the thing that is different, and by the way, I've done a video all about sort of the way that you can organize things in terms of uh, the server is just the, the another name for my community, my home, my place that I'm inviting you into. Uh, so don't be put off by the word server, by the way. It's, uh, it's just the place to host your community. So consider it the equivalent of the group part of Facebook group. So this is just my little group. Um, and then you've got different ways to organize things. So um, already... <laughs> we've got something that is lacking in Facebook, which is that we do have all of these different uh, sort of groupings of the conversations that uh, people can have. So uh, the thing about my uh, my particular channel, so do, having a Discord server for my channel makes a lot more sense than a Facebook group because the other thing about a Facebook group is you might want to have different topics and things like that that are covered. And certainly on my channel, I mean, I've covered all sorts of things like Mac automation. I'm talking about Discord right now, obviously, uh, but I've also talked about Stream Deck and Ecamm Live uh, together and separately on a number of occasions, <laughs> like over 100 plus videos on just those two things. Um, but then I talk about other things like, you know, for example, setup. So people are finding my content uh, for different reasons. And with setup, I've got a whole series of videos that are just on the setup apps. So there may be people who watch my videos, who subscribe, who may be really only interested in that. Maybe they don't use Ecamm Live, they don't use Stream Deck, and they're just interested in the setup stuff or maybe just the automation stuff. Well, if we were in a Facebook group with everyone all sort of thrown into the mix together, um, then people would be coming to that feed in that group. Uh, and some of it would just seem like, well, I'm not really interested in any of this. Whereas with Discord, we can be very uh, intentional about the groupings of things. So for example, if I scroll down here, uh, the channel, obviously, Take One Tech. So lots of tech talk, basically. Uh, but it is now split up into, yeah, all the people who like my Ecamm Live videos. Then we've got a section there to talk about Ecamm Live stuff. Uh, the people who like Stream Deck, that is there for them too. Uh, productivity. Uh, I do talk about YouTube analytics and monetization and stuff like that, more so in my live streams, my weekly uh, updates that I do. Um, so that is a place to talk about that. Obviously, just started uh, producing my courses. So Ecamm Live Masterclass for one, um, that is something that I'm doing on Kajabi. So we're doing more content around that. So the point is, we've got this organizational structure here uh, that is just completely lacking in, uh, in Facebook. So that is a great uh, a great reason to uh, uh, to consider something like Discord because you can then go into these conversations. And what you'll also notice is uh, there is nothing uh, sort of <laughs> jumping out at me trying to distract me. If I am a you know somebody who's coming into here uh, wanting to learn about something or engage about something or join in the conversation about something, um, then I can just go to the specific point that I have an interest in uh, without just being bombarded with all of the uh, the other stuff together. The other thing that is uh, great about Discord is you can also kind of segment people as well. So you could, could have little subgroups for things so that people could say, well, I'm only interested in certain things. And so they only get access to certain things. So where I've mentioned about, obviously, I've got these separate things for Ecamm Live, Stream Deck, Automation, all that sort of stuff. Um, people could actually select just the ones that they want to see so that these ones don't even appear for them if that is what they wanted. Uh, but you can also create separate spaces. So for example, with my Ecamm Live Masterclass, uh, when people sign up to that, then they do get access to the Ecamm Live Masterclass area of the Discord server. So that is kind of like a sort of members only area. 
Same with my buy me a coffee. Uh, so <laughs> it's a good time to mention that. Buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech. That's the best way to support the channel on a one-off or ongoing basis. Um, and uh, so if people have joined the buy me a coffee membership over there, then they get access to some specific areas of the server that aren't available to everyone else. So you can actually arrange people into different membership tiers, things like that, or just give them access, as I say, to things like courses where you want a little community around that specific course for people who are attending it. So there's lots of ways that you can uh, work with this with uh, with different roles and things like that you still do have the ability uh, in uh, discord to uh, you know tag people so people who are in the server you can actually tag them and uh, uh, and so that they will see those notifications and that there again is coming back to this whole thing of focus because rather than uh, you know looking at Facebook and seeing a notification about every single group that you're a member of and all of your personal Facebook notifications just all mashed together in one big long list here when you come into the server uh, it will actually say um, the uh, notifications that you have and so if you were mentioned in anything in that server so people can be a lot more intentional about what they're doing I mean part of my thing with productivity uh, that I uh, focus on with my you know my own task management management and things like that um, one of the big lessons that you'll get from uh, David Allen's getting things done is the whole thing of uh, context to all of the tasks that you have to do which is you don't want to be presented with all of the tasks that you've got on your task list um, when a you can't necessarily do them because you don't have all the things you need at that particular time um, or they're just not relevant to the task in hand as it were uh, and so that I think translates quite nicely over to discord as well which is I don't want to see the notifications for everything that's going on in my life on Facebook um, just because I'm happy to happen to come to this particular group. I only want to see the no notifications that are relevant to this group if I'm being intentional about coming here. So that is another thing that you will get in uh, in Discord is the sort of notifications. You can also be very uh, uh, intentional about what you're doing in particular channels as well. So you can turn off uh, um, uh, notifications on certain things and uh, you know only be shown the things that uh, that matter to you. And you can also just sort of hide any things in this side column that you are not uh, in the sidebar that you're not actually uh, interested in or you don't want to receive notifications about. Um, so the final thing though is the uh, fact that it's not just a place for chat in terms of uh, text chat and talk and things like that like you've got in Facebook. Obviously with Facebook you can do live streams into a particular group. Well you can do that in here as well but you can actually go one step further because you can actually do full on video calls and that might be that you want to be able to allow your community to come together you know just to have a, a general call like as if it was a zoom call but you can also do it if you were going to be doing a presentation or you know the equivalent of a live stream where you were the one that was uh, streaming and you know you don't necessarily want everyone else to be jumping up so you could actually just do a uh, effectively a live stream into your one of the uh, the video channels in there as well there's also uh, i'll just mention this one as well there's also uh, the ability to do effectively the same as clubhouse so you can have a sort of voice it's not called a voice channel but uh, something similar to um, <laughs> clubhouse whereby you can uh, you can you know have a, an audio only uh, event uh, where you can still invite people up so effectively it's clubhouse uh, potentially zoom it's kind of live streaming as well uh, all wrapped into this with all of the uh, the messaging and things like that all in all I feel it's just a much better sort of organizational uh, structure to it now I did do a video uh, previously which was uh, sort of giving an overview of discord so definitely uh, check that one out if you haven't already um, but this is basically just a very sort of high level of <laughs> the, the reasons why I think that this is a, uh, a sort of better approach to um, to managing a community and hosting a community than with um, uh, than with Facebook groups now there is a much better resource than my channel to find out all about that and that is discord for creators now what I'll do is I'll leave a link to the playlist which contains a lot of discord for creators videos over on the right hand side and you can be uh, become enlightened <laughs> as I did after I discovered it